Hello and welcome to Electro Study. In this session, I'm going to discuss one of the important experiment in analog electronics lab, that is BJT common emitter voltage amplifier. In this session, I'm going to discuss the demonstration of this particular experiment and the procedure in brief. Our ultimate goal is to design and implement BJT common emitter amplifier using voltage divider bias with and without feedback. Also, we need to determine the frequency response. The following apparatus are required for conducting the experiment. You can make a note. We require NPN transistor, that is CL100. You can go for SL100 also. Then we read the following resistors and we have done the design. So design, I'll make a separate video. Video It takes a bit, little bit of time so that I cannot add along with this video. So in the coming video, I'm going to make out the design. Definitely at that time, I'll be explaining how to get these values. That is called a design. Then capacitors, we are going to assume that is input and output capacitors. Then regulated DC power supply is required. Then to vary the frequency, we require signal generator. Then a CRO for observing the waveform. And we need the CRO probes and the connecting wires. Then DRB, okay, decade resistor box. Finally, to, in, to do, we are doing the breadboard. We are doing the connection in breadboard. So these are the apparatus required for completing the experiment. I would like to show you the circuit diagram related to the particular experiment. So as you can observe, we have the following components, following passive components, such as capacitors. We have coupling capacitor at the input stage, then coupling capacitor at the output stage. And we are having the emitter resistor, that is RE and the RC. These values we are already uh, going for the design. So kindly watch the next video. Then R1 and R2 voltage divider. Uh, this uh, this is actually voltage divider, and uh, we are uh, basically we are using the voltage divider bi biasing. Okay, theory and design will be explained in the coming session. And we are having the input AC. Okay, uh, sinusoidal uh, voltage, and we are having the VCC uh, of 10 volt. And this is setting by, by by using regulated DC power supply. Also, we can see the BJT. We have the base terminal, then collector terminal, emitter terminal. So the arrow is outward. So it is a NPN transistor. We have chosen CL100. And this is your output. And the function of CE, that is a bypassing capacitor. Bypass, bypassing capacitor. Also, uh, we have to take care about uh, which one is VCC and which is uh, ground. So, so connection should be done properly. First of all, you need to identify the base collector and emitter terminal of the given BJT. Then you can start doing the connection. First you connect a resistor uh, directly to the emitter. Then you need to connect a capacitor parallel to RE. Both should be connected to the ground. Afterwards, you can go for the collector capacitor. Later, you can uh, connect uh, 220 kilo ohm resistor. Afterwards, 5.6 kilo ohm. Then the connection can be fulfilled. Then you can connect uh, VCC like in this fashion. Then you need to connect the input capacitor. Coupling capacitor CC1 and the coupling capacitor CC2. One is belong to input, another is belong to output. And uh, you need to set the desired voltage. That procedure I'm going to explain. And uh, you need to bifurcate which is the input terminal and which is the output terminal. Okay, before watching to this particular video, please watch my video related to how to make use of breadboard, how to do the connections in breadboard. The link is available in the i button and the description box. First of all, you need to watch, then only you can understand uh, the demonstration properly. I think you are following me. First of all, you need to uh, do the connection as per the given circuit diagram. Where is the circuit diagram? Yes, I have already shown you now. So this is your circuit diagram. Do the connection as per the circuit diagram uh, and uh, pro so provide the supply of 10 volt as a VCC from the RPS. Check VCE, voltage across collector and emitter, voltage across base and emitter and uh, emitter voltage. Later, your job is to set the input as 50 millivolt peak to peak sinusoidal waveform at a frequency of 1 kilohertz. This can be done using signal generator and a CRO. Anyway, signal generator produces the waveform of 50 millivolt peak to peak sinusoidal, which is having the frequency of 1 kilohertz. That can be directly observed in CRO and make sure that you have applied 
50 millivolt peak to peak sinusoidal at a frequency of 1 kilohertz. Later, what you can do is uh, you have to provide the input and output. Which one is input and which is output? All right. The output of signal generator will be given to the input side. Then the output will be given to the CRO. Later, your job is to vary the input voltage starting from 100 hertz to, if you want, you can vary up to 1 megahertz. Then you need to observe what is going to happen at the lower frequency, what will happen during the uh, medium frequency. If the frequency is very much high, what would be the response? Then you need to plot the response curve. So what about the response curve? How will you plot? It is very simple. You need to uh, plot the curve by using a semi-log graph. Okay, I'll make a separate video how to how to plot the curve by using semi-log graph. You need to make out by using the semi-log curve or semi-log. Now, what you are supposed to do is you need to vary the frequency, say uh, 100 hertz. 100 hertz to if you want, you can vary up to uh, 1 uh, megahertz. Then uh, correspondingly, you need to note down the output voltage, V0. What is the value of V0? Then take the ratio of V0 by V. That is called a gain. Okay, that is called gain. Anyway, V0 divided by what is the V in? That will be 50 millivolt. That is already set. Okay, if you want, you can change it, but input will be fixed only. 50 millivolt peak to peak. Then you need to convert the gain into decibel. Use the formula. 20 into log gain or log V0 by VI. What is V0 by VI? Obviously, it's voltage gain. Correct, no? Like this, you have to compute. You have to prepare the table, observation table. Later, use the semi log graph. Okay, semi log graph. Semi log graph you need to use. And uh, in the x axis, you have to plot the frequency. Okay, x axis you are supposed to plot the frequency. Y axis you need to provide the gain with the decibel scale. You know how to convert gain into decibel 20 log V0 by VI or V in. Okay, then you will be getting the curve like this at a lower frequency. This will be the lower frequency. And uh, at the medium frequency, you will be getting the curve like this, medium. And at a higher frequency, uh, the gain will be reduced. So you should know the term capacitive reactance. Theory will be explained later. So what is capacitive reactance? How about the relation between the frequency and capacit capacitive reactance? All right. Later, you can take... Uh, you have to decide FC1 and FC2. Okay, so what you can do is, and uh, you have to take the gain of uh, 3 decibel. Uh, at this cutting point, you will be getting the corner frequency 1, and at this cutting point, you will be getting the corner frequency 2. Correct? So, this is your frequency response. How to take the reading? That I am going to help you. So, we have prepared, our team has prepared a simple video. So, everybody can see that video and try to understand how to rig up the connection. Once you understand that particular connection, or uh, say you can do by yourself, your own manner. Okay, so first you please watch the video very carefully. I think I think you can observe the screen properly. So as you can observe, we are having a breadboard. So first of all, you need to understand which one is VCC. So uh, these terminals, these row, see, these are called VCC. These points you can take it as VCC. And these points you consider it as ground, correct, no? Negative. Likewise, uh, this particular row, this will be VCC, understanding, no? Likewise, this will be ground. So, we take, this is VCC, and if you want, you can write it as ground. Okay, ground. This will be VCC and this is your ground. So this area you can do the connection. All right. So that's all about the basic information about breadboard. Please watch the detailed video. See, identify the ground and VCC. That is the first job. Then you need to arrange all the components which are required for doing the connection. All right. So try to do the connection effectively. Try to use less number of wires. Your connection should be compact. First of all, what you are supposed to do is you need to identify the terminals of the transistor. SL100 we have chosen. So we are taking, we are showing you the SL100. Identify the notch. So in the next side of the next, the right side of the notch will be uh, your emitter. 
next to emitter will be base next to base will be collector ebc do you remember the thumb rule like notes then emitter base collector so please watch carefully okay then emitter side you can keep in uh, towards your face understanding no see how we connected so uh, you can see very clearly that emitter will be facing towards us next will be base then collector so things will be very clear so i'll be pausing this so please uh, see this portion will be emitter uh, next will be base then collector understanding no where is the notch yeah this is your notch i think that the uh, concept is clear to everyone so have a practice it then only you can verify okay because you are watching now now if you practice once or twice you will be expert so please go ahead now what you are supposed to do is uh, the next thing is uh, you need to identify the resistor you you must have known the color code uh, if you don't know the color code you can use the multimeter digital multimeter identify the value so i require 220 ohm okay 220 ohm uh, resistor okay 220 ohm resistor then i will be connecting to emitter so can i show the circuit diagram yes if you want i will show the circuit diagram once again so let me show you the circuit diagram here friends please see the re that is 220 ohm where they connect one terminal to emitter other terminal to ground that's all, that's what i did so don't don't uh, feel that this is too complicated it is very easy only so we have done uh, the M M uh, the re we have connected next we need to uh, make use of the bypassing capacitor bypassing capacitor will be parallel to 220 ohm uh, resistor okay so both are parallel bypassing capacitor the value we have chosen as 100 microfarad so we have connected 100 microfarad one to uh, the emitter side other is connected at the ground side it's very clear to all okay so afterwards we need to choose 820 ohm resistor so 820 ohm resistor will be connected to the collector side once again i will show you the circuit diagram so let me pause the video okay you can check the circuit diagram again yes so i'll be showing you the uh, particular circuit diagram so kindly verify so where is the collector resistor where is the emitter resistor where is the bypassing capacitor all right yes uh, please check it up we have a collector capacitor collector resistor rc collector resistor rc emitter resistor re here then bypassing capacitor how much 100 microfarad only this much we have done then we identified the collector uh, emitter and the base first of all we identified the nodes next to the nodes will be emitter then base collector emitter i kept towards my face understanding no yeah so next uh, you need to complete the remaining connection let us go ahead so please follow up now you can see uh, the connection once again so we have connected uh, R1, RC, RE, then R2, then we made a coupling capacitor at the input stage and the output stage. I think it's clear to all. See, we have made the connections. Okay. How we are making the connection, you can see very carefully. We are not using any additional wires. So through the components itself, we made a connection. Okay, later you need to connect the coupling capacitor at the input and output stage. Correct. So we are now we are connecting the coupling capacitor at the output side. Likewise, we need to connect at the input side also. In that capacitor, the it's an electrolytic capacitor. Uh, no worries, we are having polarity, positive and negative. It's directly mentioned over the so no need to worry. So connect the polarity accordingly. Yes connection uh, we have completed like this you can perform the connection use your own logic so I, I will be pausing the video once so see this how we connected like this you can perform in this fashion you can uh, carry on your connection so make sure that everything is tight good enough to hold correct yes now we need to connect the input and output uh, identify what about the input what about the output? Where do you connect the input and output? Uh, make a separate wire and uh, place it separately. Correct, no? So we have connected the output terminal. 
Likewise, we need to connect the input terminals also. If you want, I will pause the video and I will show you the circuit diagram once again. So let me show you the circuit diagram again. So look at the circuit diagram. Yeah. So uh, this is your input, correct? No? Input terminal. This will be the output terminal. Output terminal actually negative end of the capacitor. Input terminal positive end of the coupling capacitor. Understanding now? So like this, you can uh, proceed for the connection. Let me go ahead. Yes. Now what you are supposed to do is, let the connection be there itself. Later, I need to set the input voltage. What is the input voltage? So input voltage should be how much? 50 millivolt, right? 50 millivolt, peak to peak. The frequency should be 1 kilohertz, correct? What kind of waveform I require? I require sinusoidal waveform, correct? Now, this is actually the specification which we have given. So, based on your manual, you can perform that, correct? Now, then we need to make out the RPS also because uh, the VCC will be 10 volt only. Set the VCC is equal to 10 volt. So, that we are doing actually. Check it out. The VCC maintain the VCC. So, where, where should I connect the VCC? Okay, I'll be showing you. Check, let me check the circuit diagram once again for you. Yeah. So, VCC will be connected in this fashion. See, where the VCC is connected. Here only VCC will be connected. Understanding now, VCC is 10 volt. Where, where will I get the 10 volt? From the regulated DC power supply. RPS. Correct now. So, I have got... Uh, the 10 volt from the RPS itself. So let us proceed further. I'm going to show you the demonstration. Let us uh, observe carefully. Yeah. Next, we need to set the voltage which I mentioned. Uh, sinusoidal waveform, 10, uh, the 50 millivolt peak to peak and 1 kilohertz frequency, number of cycles per second. So connect the signal generator and the CRO by connecting each other, probe, using the probe. Have you seen the probe? Yeah, this is your probe. So probe, with the help of probe, you can connect the CRO and the function generator. Function generator is also known as signal generator. So we have having the facility for changing the frequency. See, this is your frequency and uh, you can change the range, range and the frequency, yes. Check it up. So using the free, uh, range and frequency, you can make out. This is your range and this will be the frequency. You can uh, ch change it accordingly. And to change the amplitude, we are having the knob to change the am amplitude. It is very clear. Okay. While connecting the probe, you should be, it should be very much carefully. You should be, it should be done very much carefully. Okay. Let us go ahead. So I am going to set the frequency. So change the range. You can make it uh, 1000, right? 1000 Hertz. 1000 Hertz is nothing but 1 kilohertz. Same thing you can observe in the CR also. Anyway, we require amplitude of 50 millivolt peak to peak. Frequency, we need to set it as uh, 1 kilohertz. That we are going to do. Yes, we are almost done. Uh, now, in the CRO, you need to take care only the channel one and with the volt per division. Where is the volt per division? Can you see the volt per division? Uh, this is your uh, now for the volt per division, correct? And this is for time per division. Time per division. And uh, time per division. And this will be the volt per division that you have to take care. Correct? Then what you are supposed to do is you have to identify the voltage level by checking the volt per division as well as how many uh, boxes, how many height, what is the height of the square box you need to count. The height of the, how many number of square box, that should be multiplied with the, uh, the volt per division. That will be the voltage. Okay, you need to study how to set the CRO. Right? So here, now I need to see the time per division. Only you have to count how many number of boxes are there. That will be multiplied with the volt per division. That is a criteria. Okay. Uh, now let's go ahead. Yes. So we are going to set 50 millivolt peak to peak.
and uh, make sure that you have to click on this uh, minus 20 decibel okay otherwise uh, it won't come to the particular range that's why we need to click on that uh, minus 20 decibel that range you have to select then you need to increase that amplitude okay slowly you have to increase the amplitude correct yes then how to get the reading uh, then how many boxes are there only one box no that means height will be one one into volt per division that will be the voltage correct frequency is almost uh, one one kilohertz you can set it accurately okay so what we have done is we made uh, the input input we made now what you can do is we already set the input now that input will be given to uh, the input of the circuit where is the input of the circuit i'll be showing you once again so that uh, you can understand it properly so please refer the circuit diagram see uh, v in you can see right this v in will be given to where here this is your input this is your input and this will be the output so connect the input and output that is the next procedure okay same thing we are going to show with you so please observe the uh, video carefully let us uh, go ahead i think it's clear to all we are connecting the input and output so uh, that uh, while connecting the prop, you should be very much careful. Do not change the polarity. Yes, same thing we are doing. You may feel that there are a number of connections, but if you practice once or twice now, it will be very easy. And uh, whatever you are seeing now, that is RPS. We need to set the voltage of 10. 10 volt we need to set. Correct? We can see the CRO output at the CRO. Uh, then we, can, we are providing the DC voltage of 10 volt that will act as VCC. Then we can see the function generator also. Function generator is also known as signal generator. Don't get confused regarding that. Yeah. Now you can you have to measure what you what you are supposed to do. Re recall the procedure. So go ahead with the procedure. What is the procedure? Are you remembering? If not, I'll be showing you the procedure once again. So according to this particular procedure, see go through once again so uh, we have set the input voltage now vary the frequency from 100 hertz to higher frequency then you need to change the response you have to check the response what about the value of output okay what is the value of output that you are going to check let's come back to the video so please observe carefully so you are increasing the frequency you are changing the uh, frequency. Uh, whenever we are changing the frequency, you know, there are variations in the output voltage. It is merely visible over there. Everybody can see that. So in the right side, in the right the screen right side, this is your frequency. If we are changing, we are cha increasing the frequency. This is your output. Correct, no? Then output is getting varied. That is very clear. Correct, no? Make sure that it should be sinusoidal waveform only. Here you can set the range. Uh, what kind of waveform do you want? Either sinusoidal waveform or triangular waveform or trapezoidal waveform. We have options that if you observe the function generator, then it is very clear. Correct now? Yeah, that we are going to change. So what we have done is uh, we changed the frequency. Okay. Uh, then we are supposed to note down. We are supposed to note down the particular reading like this as the frequency changes what about the changes in the output voltage once you get the output voltage calculate the gain convert the gain into decibel later on you have to use the semi log graph and how to use the semi log graph i'll explain in the next session this is a length, somewhat lengthier video that's why i'm breaking this video at this point of time so please watch the coming video to have a better understanding how to plot the semi log graph how to perform the design of the circuit all those things i am going to explain in the coming video stay tuned thank you so much for watching this video thank you so much for watching this video if you are having any queries related to the experiment uh, feel free to put up the questions in the comment box we are very happy to answer happy learning have a good day